Now is a good opportunity, as you're jotting down some working, um, to explain some of the language that's in the question. That's kind of, um, it's kind of there to, prov to provide an explanation for why some of the numbers are what they are. Um, I didn't want to focus on them because this is a mathematics lesson, not an economics lesson, but there's a blurry line between those. So let me explain what you're looking at. Aaron deposits $100 at the end of each year. By the way, as you've already noticed in previous questions, that's important. We're not just providing that piece of information to you out of curiosity. Uh, the fact that it's at the end of each year is going to have an impact on the equations that you form. Um, he deposits that money into, and then you're like, what's this about? Oh, now that you said that. An aggressive superannuation fund. You're like, I'm not used to seeing the word aggressive come up in my mathematics lessons and I'm putting it there on purpose. Um, what does an aggressive fund mean? Um, it's taking, as you can see in the question, it's taking risks, high risks, um, risks that mean when you invest that money, sometimes you're going to make a loss. Uh, in fact, if you go and do some research into aggressive investment funds, one of the things they say to you right at the start is, if you take it for say 10 years, we're going to give you the heads up now that within that 10 years, you are likely to make losses, like three to four times at least. That's the nature of the risks that we're taking. It's volatile is another good way to say it. But the upshot of taking those bigger risks is um, you make this massive interest rate that you can see down the bottom here, 10% interest per annum, which is a lot higher than what would happen if you take conservative investments that you won't probably lose money on, but um, because they're so safe, you're also less likely to make larger margins, larger profits. So the key figures, of course, are $100. That's not a figure, but it's an important reality. It's at the end of each year. You've got an interest rate there, 10% per annum, because nothing else has been said. You can assume it's compounding annually. And then you go with this, la this one last piece of information that you'll need for the question, which is? Nine years. Uh, how long? Which is nine years. So question. Is it 10% starting from $100, or is it 10% accumulated after the... Like you know you said that it happens over time. Mm -hmm. So this is, Start with 10. this is a really good question, right? So this 10% interest per annum, right? It applies to whatever amount of money, whatever quantity of money is in the superannuation fund, yeah? So let's just think about, and I'm actually giving you a leg up into the question already, but you asked the question, so that's fine. Uh, let's think about day one. Day one, 1st of January, just for the sake of simplicity. How much money, read the question carefully, it's not a rhetorical question. On the 1st of January, how much money is in the bank account? Look again carefully. On the 1st of January, there is no money in the account because he deposits when? At the end of each year. On the 2nd of January, there's nothing there. On the 3rd, on the 4th, on the 30th of December, there is nothing there. But at the end, on the 31st, he makes an investment. You might say that's a bit weird. You're like, why would he wait all that time? Um, the first answer is just because of convention, but it will become a little clearer later on. Um, in fact, I'm even going to say after AP4s why I'm phrasing the question in this way. Okay? So I'm just setting the seed. I'm just sowing the seed. We'll come back to it, I promise. But for now, that's going to form our equations. Did you have a question or a suggestion? Coffee. Oh, no. Yeah, I'm good. I'll keep it to myself. For now. Yeah, um, Mrs. Lees. I have kind a of number of people who've just shown me a compound interest formula hmm. with an answer. Mm -hmm. Why would that not be the best approach to take for this problem? Why wouldn't we just pull out a compound interest formula? There's, um, there's a single word in this question that tells you, actually, I mean, there's more than one, but there's one in particular that tells you this is not just a compound interest situation on its own. You can't just take that number, that interest rate, nine years, and then off you go. Anyone want to give me a suggestion what words? So superannuation is, is kind of like a big flashing sign, right? Annuation, of course, in superannuation means? It happens annually every year, right? But, but even before you got to superannuation, look earlier, look earlier. Before aggressive. At the end of, at the end of what? Each year. Each year, he puts in more money. A deposit happens once, then it happens again, and again, and again. The compound interest formula doesn't take care of that. It's just a single body of money, and it grows according to interest.
We'll come back to that idea, I promise. But for now, I want you to recognize this is not just a compound interest question. It's going to require, it's building on knowledge we've worked on for the last week and a half. Have a think, okay? I'll hit pause again and let you have a go. You know how to do these questions. We have working not just to like arrive at an answer, but to convince us that that answer is right. Um, I was saying this to Perrin before. Um, I wrote this question, as you can see, by my handwriting. And so I didn't have like some answer key or someone else I could ask like, please tell me what the solution is so that I can check that I'm correct. I had to use my working, just like you have to use your working, to convince yourself, to show that the logic is watertight and that you come up with a number which actually is correct. Now the reason I know that that's not what a lot of people have been doing in the room is, they're showing me a calculator and it's got a number on it. And that's it. And there's no working that we can say, oh, I can see where that calculation came from. I'm convinced, right? Um, I worked this out some time ago. I didn't remember what the number is. The number is not the thing that's important to me. It's the way that you've argued and constructed the reason for that number. So let's begin. You can see I've started out with some words. If you have begun your working without any words like this, then we already are in some trouble. Because you might start talking about A this or A that, but I don't even know what A means. Is it at the start of the year? Is it the end of the year? That kind of really matters, right? The second thing you might notice is, unlike in previous questions, um, I often start from A naught, which sounds weird. Like, why, why start counting from naught? Who does that, right? Well, the answer is, I often do it, depending on what's happening in the question. In this case, I have not. And I wonder if anyone can give me any suggestions for why I've gone straight to the end of the first year. Not the end of the zero of year. What do you think, Seth? Um, wait, we just have the conversation. <laughs> Sorry, it's because um, that's already one year when he's put that installment in. So it is year one as opposed to year zero. Very good. So in order to write something meaningful for this equation, right, something has to have happened. There's no point putting down before anything has actually occurred. If I put down A0 here, what happens at the end of the zeroth year? According to this question, nothing has happened. When does he put in his first installment, his first deposit, at it's at the end of the first year, which is exactly how I've defined this, okay? Now on some other question, I might call A the start of the year, or I might say A0 is the thing that matters. You have to, like this is one of the key differences between the advanced course and the standard course. You're both looking at this same idea, the same concept, you're still doing the same calculations, but we expect you guys to actually be able to handle and explain a variety of different situations and not just assume it's one way or another. So I'm gonna start with this first year and I have this $100, okay? He's made a deposit. Has anything else happened at the end of this first year? Doesn't he add the... Sean, you shook your head at me pretty quickly. No, why do you say that? What's, what's your thought? The question that just said, literally said, tells us that $100 will put in, that's it. Okay. I'm just going to pause for a second. Just going to wait for everyone's attention. You still haven't. So, Sean, you're saying the question itself says a deposit has happened and that's all? So, did you ever want to add something or did you want to question something? If it's put in at the end of the year, it hasn't generated any sort of interest. Okay, very good. So I'm going to put together, I think those thoughts uh, have it captured perfectly. First, it says that's all that happens, but we can infer, like, interest happens when the money's been in there for some time, and then we're like, oh, I should, I should earn something back for that fact. But it only came in right at the very end, so it hasn't been in there long enough to actually earn any interest. So does that make sense? Cool. So, then we can start to build this pattern, right? And if you launched into a formula, as many of you did without establishing this pattern, it's just kind of a recipe for disaster. Even for those of you who, there were a couple of you who had the right answer on your calculator, but you didn't know that it was right, and you're not gonna get full marks anyway because you haven't justified why it is right. A year elapses. What happens? Hmm. So interest happens to this, right? Um, because you had this first amount and it's been there for 12 months, right? So I'm going to multiply by my interest calculation. And then, as the question says, at the end of that year, I put in a new deposit. So there becomes another 100. Are you okay with that? Yeah? Um, it was a bit superfluous really to write this in because there's just one thing there. But I think it's important that we show the pattern where did this come from? You start from where you ended, okay? All right, I'm going to A3 because I always need three terms to establish a pattern. Yeah. Ah, that's a good question. Actually, I did kind of um, float over that really quickly. 
I quickly followed over this step, but we sort of do it quite frequently, so that's why I didn't labor the point. Um, even though some people, I said, don't use the compound interest formula because more than compound interest is happening. But compound interest is happening to each individual deposit. And that's what this part is. It's really the one plus r to the power of n, right? So it's one plus r, the r is 0 0.1, it's 10%, and the n in this case is one, it's only been there for one year, okay? So that's the shorthand part for that. All right, one more to establish the pattern. Third year, what's happened? Well, it's going to be our Okay, I start with where I ended, okay? And then what happens to that? Yeah, good, it attracts interest, right? It's been there for a year, it did better. And then at the end of each year, one last thing happens, the deposit goes in, so plus 100, okay? Uh, let's go ahead and actually crunch this out. So here's A2 in the previous line. So I'm gonna multiply everything in this line by 1.1. Yeah, there's the first term, here comes the second term, and then here's the final, or the third deposit, this final for this point right here. Okay, do you see the pattern that's formed? Are you okay with that? 